to Marlin's All Access from Home, brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. I am Jessica Blaylock, joined by my special guest, a man you know very well, Paul Severino, does the play-by-play -play for Fox Sports Florida for our Marlins broadcast. Paul, obviously we're seeing each other in a different capacity through our computer screens, but we understand the importance of doing this at home, making sure that we follow all protocol, practice social distancing, because that's what's going to get us back to baseball and the sports that we love so much. But uh, it's obviously been a very different time in all of our lives. How have you been staying busy during this hiatus? Uh, well, Jessica, thanks for having me. And uh, well, I, you know, I've been trying to uh, learn languages. I'm trying to learn French. Um, I'm reading a lot of Shakespeare what? and I'm exercising. <laughs> you are such things. a scholar. And I'm a not gentleman. doing any of those things. No, not at all. <laughs> I might go for a bike ride every once in a while, but it's a very, uh, it's very low key half hour bike ride thing. Um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's weird. It stinks for everybody, but you know, it's for the greater good. You know, I think that right. uh, first and foremost, like you said, we want everybody to be uh, as healthy as possible. I know that there are a lot of people that are affected in much greater ways than, you know, we are missing baseball. Um, you know, there's people that uh, obviously health is, is first and foremost here. And, um, you know, a lot of people are affected economically. We worry about them. So for everybody to get healthy and, and stay healthy and get back to work, I think we all have to kind of stay home and uh, try to make the most of it as best we can. So your question, what am I doing? Um, a lot of homeschooling. <laughs> um, with my wife and I, we are uh, Professor we, Severino. That's right. That's right. We were uh, we were already in the running for Parents of the Year, but now we are also in the running for <laughs> Teachers of the Year, which is fantastic. Um, so uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of homeschooling, a lot of family time, and uh, and I'm I'm I've started uh, this live streaming show with uh, radio host, uh, radio play by play announcer Glenn Geffner. So we're uh, we're doing stuff uh, on Twitter every couple days, a couple times a week. Uh, it's on Twitter. It's on YouTube. We've got a YouTube channel. Uh, we have a logo, so you know it's legit. Um, That's what so makes yeah, it I mean, special. It wasn't right, all right. the special guests that you had on or the expert analysis no. by you and Geff. It was when you got right. the logo that I thought to myself, all right, this is something I can really trust. Right. And that logo is not something that, you know, we just came together and did it ourselves. That logo actually came from England, believe it or not, like a legit graphic design company in England designed that logo. So wow. we uh, that legitimized whatever the heck it is that we think we're doing. But uh, we've had some great guests. Um, DVH it's, it's recently, been fun. right? Dave Van DVH Moore. recently. Yep. That's right. That's right. Um, I don't know when people will see this show, but um, we're, we're going to in just a few hours going to talk with Jason Stark, a, a Hall of Fame baseball writer. So um, you know, we tried to have some people from the broadcasting family, uh, hoping to get some people from the Marlins family, some former players, uh, and national voices. So again, it's not, uh, and, and Glenn and I have also been cognizant to try to not call them interviews as much as we tried to call them conversations. I think, uh, and you know, this having been part of our broadcasts, a lot of times when we have people up in the booth, it's more of a, an interview where it's, you know, question, and then we've got to stop because there's a double in the gap or, uh, you, you ask a question and the answer's got to stop because they're making a pitching change or whatever. We've we've got as much time as we need, so we've been uh, we've been fortunate to kind of get into some some deeper things, some fun stories, some backgrounds on some people. I mean, you mentioned Dave Dave Van Horn. I mean, over 50 years broadcasting. So I mean, it was uh, it was great. I don't want to give away the whole thing, but the time that he told the story of how he uh, went to dinner in New York back in the day and ended up. Uh, dining with Frank Sinatra was a was a fun one. And uh, when he was done telling that story, it was his partner, Duke Snyder, that introduced him to, to Frank Sinatra. And I how do you top that? I said, you don't. But yeah, exactly. what 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 you do, what I do is I then get mad at Todd Hollinsworth for never introducing me to people <laughs> the ilk of Frank Sinatra. So, you know, Didn't setting you have the bar high, Todd. Least meet Sylvester Stallone on a treadmill? Uh, you, you have a great memory. It was our first road trip in 2018. So my first road Remember trip with the Marlins. Ball. I never That's right. anything. Right. Like a steel trap. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I went into the gym. I think one of the six or seven times I went to the gym that year and, uh, who shows up, uh, Rocky Sylvester Stallone is there. And, and I am not one to walk up to celebrities and be that guy, but I actually, I had the guts to do it. He was in the middle of conversation. So I, Walked away, gave him a little time, and next thing I know, he disappeared. So, um, 
but then I ran up the steps at the what is it the art museum so I feel like I was I was one with with Sly Stallone well speaking of celebrities I brought a local celebrity to be a part of this oh for goodness sakes what is is that uh that's uh name? flipper that's flipper right is it flipper not not flipper chipper it's chipper flipper oh, and chipper it was that's right sprinkles or maybe prinkles let's go you know what let's go with prinkles all right uh, well, we'll see if prinkles oh I, I see i see homer in the door right here hang on hang on homer homer's in the door i'll go i'll, I'll go back to my set in just a second but but homer Let's see here. Let's flip. Homer's looking through the glass. There's Homer looking lonely right there. Oh, uh, Prinkles, guy. say hi to Homer. Yeah. That's I good. Mean, That's good. This is a real legit this interview is now, cool. Laylock. I mean, we could honestly this is really nice here, and I think the people would be thrilled. But let's go ahead it's and get been great. To... We'll see you next time. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Marlins at Home. Uh, let's go ahead and get into some baseball topics because I know that we're all anxiously awaiting the start of the season. And when the season does eventually get underway, I don't think anyone would be surprised if Sandy Alcantara is the opening day starter for the Marlins. He had a fantastic second half of the season last year. He was the Marlins all-star. His ERA by the end of the season had dropped to a sub four at 3.88. Um, in addition to Sandy Alcantara, Paul, just what are some of your general thoughts on the starting rotation and what it's going to look like opening day and kind of your hopes for this young staff to continue to grow together? Well, I think that that's exactly right. Grow together, I think, is where I would start with that. I mean, they've got guys who could uh, certainly compete if you just look at the five or six names that are thrown around for who, <clears throat> excuse me, would probably be a part of that rotation uh, toward the beginning of the year, whether it's Sandy, Caleb, Jose Urania, Yamamoto, Lopez, Eliezer Hernandez, uh, that group. Uh, we've seen them. And at times, I mean, actually, you know, last night I was uh, one of the lucky ones that got to live tweet one of the games from last year. And Sandy was pitching in that game and it was a pocket in end of May and June. And you remember this, there was a 50 or 60 game stretch where the Marlins were playing about 500 ball. And right. for some, that probably sounds like a oh, big deal, 500 ball. But you look at the fact that what the record was at the end of the season and a 500 run for a third of the year is pretty impressive. So point being is that the pitching staff was doing a great job at that time last year, and those guys are coming back. So you would certainly hope that Sandy, who took a step forward in the second half, will take another step forward to begin the year and have a, a tremendous year from start to finish. Um, I, we always throw out 30, 35 starts. It'll obviously be less whatever this year comes about. But point being, uh, if he has whatever the equivalent of a 30 start stretch would be this year, uh, that is that is as good as his last year was, then that would be tremendous. If we could see the best of Caleb Smith more consistently, that would be great. We've seen a lot of up and down from Pablo Lopez, but the ups have been fantastic. So, uh, and again, you mentioned Jose Urania. So Urania is a guy who had started opening day the last two years. And, and there was a time in maybe December, November, December, I remember I was doing a podcast with Kyle Steloff and, and we had talked to Michael Hill and, you know, there was a question as to whether or not Urania was going to be in the rotation at that point in time. And now, you know, unfortunately, spring training was uh, was was halted for a little bit. But Urania was pitching well and making a bid for maybe another opening day start. Right. So that's right. that's just that group that kind of finished the 2019 season. Boy, then you talk about the guys that at whatever point in 2020 can make their major league debuts, the Knighters, the Sixto Sanchez's of the world. And I mean, you can go on and on down the line. I hesitate to list off names because I know I'll forget somebody because there are so many. Um, but the, the Marlins are, are a group right now uh, as an organization that's rich in pitching and rich in pitching depth, but also rich in pitching that could make an impact at the big league level rather soon. So uh, you, you'd love to see a guy like Sandy or Caleb or Pablo or Jordan Yamamoto or certainly Jose Urania take the reins and, and be an ace of this staff, a staff that's only going to get stronger and only going to get better. So um, they say it all the time, pitching wins championships. And uh, listen, the Marlins have to get these guys to the big leagues. They've got to succeed in the big leagues and they've got to succeed for a, a full season to worry about a championship. I get it. But um, 
they 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 have the uh, the makings and the potential right now for uh, a really fun group to watch. And I think you hit it. That's what's most exciting is the depth that the organization has, especially when it comes to starting pitching and just pitching in general. It's something that they haven't had in a long time, and the Marlins have done a tremendous job really building that aspect of their system up. All right. There were a bunch of additions that the Marlins made during the offseason, including Corey Dickerson, Brandon Kinsler. Uh, you saw Matt Joyce, Matt Kemp in camp, a lot of different guys, uh, Francisco Cervelli. When you take a look at some of the new faces for the Marlins, what's who's one of the players that you know you're looking forward to seeing in action? I think uh, Jonathan VR is going to be an interesting one. That was one of those guys uh, who came over. It was a waiver claim from Baltimore. Um, really a, a well-rounded skill set, some pop, great speed, um, and really qualifies or, or um, looks like kind of the prototypical leadoff hitter. So uh, you know, that's probably where he would go. And, and then you, you mentioned guys like Corey Dickerson, Jesus Aguilar is another one. So what that kind of does is – that gives you a guy like VR at the top of the lineup probably most days. Um, and then you got guys like Corey Dickerson and Jesus Aguilar most days are probably going to hit somewhere in that three, four, five range. And what I think that does, just those three in particular, what that will do is beef up whoever else you've got in the lineup, help them out, help out the lineup as a whole, but also help out the individuals like a guy like uh, Jorge Alfaro, for example, uh, a guy like Brian Anderson, Miguel Absolutely. Roja. These are guys who – you know, we all love and we see the potential there. And what I think it is, is uh, it, it may put those guys in even better positions to succeed. You know, I mean, I think if you look at each one of those guys, Alfaro, Rojas and Anderson in the vacuum, you love everything about them. But is there a way to make them a little bit better? And if that's a way that, you know, Miguel Rojas, who was tremendous last year, really for the bulk of, if not all the season last year, uh, at the top of that lineup, if he can do the same sort of thing at the bottom of the lineup now, you figure that might be where he ends up. Well, that lengthens the lineup. And if Brian Anderson doesn't necessarily have to hit three, four, if he hits five, six, let's just say, or two, you know, you put him, you, you give yourself a lot more options and a lot more depth to make it so that it's not, let's just say two or three guys in the lineup that can beat you, but six, seven, eight guys in the lineup that can put together good at bats and, and, bring some offense together. Um, are they going to be the twins of last year, the Yankees of last year and hit over 300 home runs, even with the fences pulled in? I, I highly doubt it. And of course, a shortened season plays into those numbers, but you know what I'm saying? Point being is that what you do is you lengthen your lineup and you make it so that one through seven, eight are really the ones that are, are, are threats for different reasons, whether it's putting the bat on the ball or making contact, productive at bats, power, um, I think that uh, I think that Michael Hill and his staff have done a great job of of taking that next step when it comes to adding the veterans that uh, that this team needs and veterans that are are not just great clubhouse guys, which they are, but also great clubhouse guys that can still produce. There is going to be more pop in that lineup, without a doubt, this upcoming season. It's going to be like you mentioned, guys like Brian Anderson, Jorge Alfaro taking another step forward in their development, guys like Jesus Aguilar and Jonathan Villar, who have been known a little bit more for power. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's going to be fun. I know we cannot wait to get this season going. Well, Paul, thank you so much. You've been an awesome guest. This has been a lot of fun, and I look forward to when we get to do this again, hopefully very soon. Awesome. Uh, remind me, I just have to lock up before I leave. I'm, I'm at Todd's house. Um, he doesn't know, but uh, I know where he leaves the spare key. So just uh, perfect. He'll really appreciate that. That's right. I'm going to vacuum before I leave. <laughs> well, that's nice of you. That's what a good neighbor would. What a guy. What a guy. <laughs> what a guy. All right. This has been a very special edition of Marlins at Home brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Thanks so much for joining us.